What's up, gel ballers? Today I'm testing out the John Wick TTI Combat Master, made by the company Double Bell. While this pistol won't make you as cool as Keanu, you can definitely lap it up with all the accessories that come with it. It's presented in a nice wooden box with a TTI logo and name on the front. And taking a look inside, you can see that Double Bell have gone full cosplay mode with this one. Along with the blaster itself, you get the lethal Dixon pencil, you get a membership card for the Continental, two gold prop coins, a small pouch, which is for the next item, my favorite thing in the entire box, which is a replica Microtech switchblade. But because switchblades are completely illegal in Australia, it's actually a comb. <laughs> I actually used the comb for one round of gameplay and managed to get six kills with it. Run the clips. <laughs> First one. Oh. Fuck. Double kill. Oh, that was friendly, was it? Yeah. I did get you then. <laughs> oh, you got me. <laughs> so close then. Yeah, that was close. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> you saved, Kurt. The John Wick kit was kindly sent to me for review by iHobby, a store based in Australia. Please use the links down below if you want to check them out because it does help support my channel. The pistol itself, Double Bell have done a decent job imitating. There are a few small differences, which if you know, you know. But for the most part, people seeing you use it out on the gel ball field will just see it as the pistol from John Wick. It has a replica fiber optic front sight and adjustable rear sight, and it has a CNC slide with all the grooves and nice sharp lines where they should be. It has an anodized bronze colored barrel, while the real steel version has more of a gold tone to it. And at the front of that barrel, out of the box, it does come with a safety orange cap, which you can just unscrew if you don't want it. Inside of that outer barrel, it has one of those gold anodized alloy inner barrels with the slits in the top. Interestingly though, it has a 7.5 mil inner diameter, where those are usually 7.2. As a result, this pistol should be more forgiving on what size gels you use. As a vague attempt at avoiding copyright issues, out of the box the logos were all covered with black stickers. Just peel those off and you're good to go. The text underneath is white in colour rather than the gold of the real thing, and the proportions are a little off on the logos. There's also some engraved logos missing entirely from the frame that are present on the original. The pistol has a functioning grip safety, so if your hand isn't holding the grip, the trigger won't be able to be pulled. It also has ambidextrous thumb safeties, which you can engage when the hammer is cocked. The grip does have the dragon scale texture to it, hey, at least they tried, but it's probably my least favorite part of the blaster overall. It doesn't wrap around the entire grip in one continuous piece like the real thing. Instead, it has what I guess you'd call four different panels. It's also just a fairly low quality grip in general compared to the real thing, it's ABS plastic. They did a decent job with the look of the magazine though. With the mag inserted, the size and shape of the mag base sticking out the bottom is a pretty close match to the real thing. It of course has that huge flared magwell that TTIs are known for, and this appears to be based on the older version of the Combat Master. The newer models of the real thing have a slightly different magwell than this. The blaster also has some nice weight to it. Without the magazine, I measured 660 grams, and with the magazine inserted, I measured 985 grams. Overall, the entire package does a pretty good job from a look and feel perspective. I think most people would see it and just know it as a pistol from John Wick, but how does it do performance-wise? The gel balls and the gas I'm using today were kindly provided to me by the Battle for Waterloo Skirmish Field Shop. 
If you live here in South Australia, come out for a game and have a look at their stock while you're here. They've got everything you need for a fun day of gel ball, gas, gels, CO2, and even HPA refills. Support your local fields because without them you have no legal reason to even own a gel blaster. The magazine holds around 18 shots depending on how meticulously you load it. The blaster is powered by green gas. Hold the mag upside down, push the nozzle in for about 5 seconds and you're good to go. The magazine this blaster came with definitely has some issues with it though. When I went to chrono the blaster, velocity was very low, averaging around 224 feet per second. And then when I went to do an accuracy test, the mag valve actually froze up on me halfway through the very first mag. I've never had this happen before with any other mag. Additionally, at least one shot in every mag would get stuck at the mag lips, preventing feeding. My very simple recommendation is to buy any other brand of 2011 gas mag. WeTech comes to mind as probably the most reliable alternative. And WeTech is what I actually ended up using for all of the gameplay footage. And for all of my testing, I actually ended up borrowing a HPA setup regulated to 100 PSI. So here's how that HPA setup shot over the chronograph. 275. 280, 279, 291, 286, 269, duplicate 269, 282, 272, one more, 286. With iHobby gels and HPA set to 100 PSI, I got a high of 291, a low of 258, average of 274, and a standard deviation of 10. Not bad at all, a huge improvement over the stock mag. So now I'm gonna test accuracy. I'll be shooting at a one meter diameter target from a distance of 20 meters away. And just for reference, a good gel blaster should never really miss from this range. Hit, 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 I think that hit, 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 that sailed off and to the left, hit, 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 just low into the right. Hit, and hit. So I'd say it's definitely capable of the same accuracy as pretty much any other gas pistol. At a distance of 20 meters away, three shots missed high and left, one shot missed low and right, but the majority of the 18 shots all landed within the one meter diameter target. I'd say you could easily score kills from 20 meters away with this blaster, though perhaps double tap to ensure the hit. After using this blaster for an entire day of skirmishing, what are my final thoughts on the John Wick kit? Well, you saw just how much fun I had with the tactical switchblade comb. I did also enjoy using the pistol. The 7.5mm in a barrel ensured I didn't have any jams or crushed gels, which sometimes happens with those tighter 7.2mm ones. And overall, the pistol itself worked great. I just wouldn't recommend the magazine that it comes with. For the gameplay footage, I was using a WeTech mag instead. If you're a fan of the John Wick franchise and you want a collectible, or if you want to hit the gel ball field wearing a suit, this is definitely the kit for all of your cosplaying needs. Check it out at iHobby using my links down below. That's all I have for you today, and consider leaving a like or subscribing. Here's two other videos you might enjoy, and as always, thanks for watching. See ya!